Thank you so much sir, for joining us. Um, I reckon that you are a telecommunications engineer. Uh, thank you so much. Sir. So I have a question for you. Uh, when you presented today uh, on this meeting, this breakfast meeting, you talked about a lot of things that has to do with telecommunications. Now, everyone has got those questions on their mind. What is Starlink? Is Starlink good for Zimbabwe? And um, recently I heard that um, Potros was saying that they're thinking about it, trying to see if it's fit for it to bring it in Zimbabwe. But you as an expert of ICT, what can you say to the Zimbabweans? Because everybody wants to know, and we can see even our telecommunications are failing uh, to keep this whole crisis of internet crisis. Sometimes you cannot access, access the internet because uh, our telecommunications are failing. So my questions to you is say, what do you think about this whole issue of Stalin coming to Zimbabwe? Okay, I'm an engineer also in Chakwanda, like I told you. I'm a telecommunications engineer. Actually, not just an engineer, I'm a chartered engineer. And for your own information, 1994, I was the best telecommunications student in the world. So, what I'm speaking is from a very informed position. Now, the global best business practice in telecoms, Stalin is a very bad idea for Zimbabwe. It's a bad idea for Africa. First of all, when Starlink operates in the market that is targeting, they don't pay taxes. They're just collecting money and they will go back and pay taxes to the US government. What is going to happen is if you move your data traffic from Econet, from Net1, from Tel1, from Powertel, you are moving revenue from your local networks to a global network which doesn't pay taxes to the government. So government is going to lose a lot of tax revenue because once we get Starlink, we are paying that money to them. And what they will do is they will put a payment system either through the Visa or the MasterCard. So the government will not be able to touch that money. The money will just flow out of the country without them paying taxes. Now Starlink is not going to open local offices. Even if they do, why are we going to give these people an, an unfair advantage? in terms of our national security. First of all, information is about security. The security of the country is, a, is compromised because you've got satellites that are now roaming all over your country and these satellites are picking information willy-nilly and people can transmit any sort of information. So your national security will be compromised. The government revenue will be compromised. The local networks, it means people are going to lose jobs. Because Econet, 60% or 70% of their revenue is probably coming from data. So if Stalin comes, they lose 30% of that. It translates to an exactly same amount of job losses. And you've got all these networks. The only problem that we have is how the networks are configured right now. The networks here are fragmented. They have different gateways and they are not cost effective connecting to the global networks. What they need is to aggregate their traffic. When they aggregate their traffic, they get a big pipe that takes the data traffic from Zimbabwe to the global networks. Now when they do that, they'll be able to negotiate for lower tariffs. When they negotiate for lower tariffs and the, when they have bigger capacity, then the internet experience in Zimbabwe will be much better. What we have right now is just a problem of policy and strategic planning. The networks are not thinking strategically. Instead of them competing on the gateways, they should actually come together, build one huge gateway, be it fiber or be it satellite. They should have one gateway, which is reliable and which is redundant. When you have a redundant gateway, it means you are feeding your signal to the global network using different routes. If one route fails, you feed using the other one. And they should have similar capacities, such that the end user will not even know that previously I was being connected. Okay, the cables that are connected in Zimbabwe to the global network right now, you have got what is called the West Africa Cable System. It's connecting Zimbabwe through Cape Town. Then you have got the Seacom Cable. It's connecting Zimbabwe via South Africa. It's connecting via Terako Data Center, which is in South Africa. These are the two key gateways into the global global space. Now, these two, if they go down, it means Zimbabwe will start struggling. Well, satellite capacity can't carry the internet traffic using satellite because it's expensive and there's no planned capacity for satellite. Now, what Zimbabwe needs to do is to develop a new fiber network with other countries, like-minded countries, to then build a pipe that will take its traffic either into London, 
when you take the traffic into London, you connect to the global networks. What I was talking about, co-location. Co-location, you have those facilities in countries like the UK. In Africa, there are very few co-location facilities. Now, when you connect at the co-location center, you actually connect to the global network, which means internet traffic from Asia, from Australia, from America, from Europe. You are actually connecting at the hub. Now, this is how the global network is connected. We just need to re-engineer our internet. But we don't need Starlink. Starlink is basically a problem. It's actually a thorn in the flesh. It will kill the local networks. It will kill revenue for government. It will kill employment. It's not good for anybody. Starlink is a lazy man's solution. Real solutions are there. We need to roll out better digital networks. And when we roll out these digital networks, they don't just come. They come with benefits. They will enhance economic growth. We're going into the digital economy. The digital space requires infrastructure. Without infrastructure, you can't transact, you can't do business. You can't communicate, you can't manage your money, market your product. You can't sell. When you look at the, the, the digital economy, when you have the internet, you can buy online, you can advertise online, you can learn online, you can work online. So all these things you can't do when you don't have the infrastructure that we are talking about. So what, I, what, what I'm saying is Potras, the ministry and everybody should not even entertain the idea of Stalin. Stalin is basically, and besides when you look at Stalin, whose interests are they saving? They are all interests, they want to make money. Making money it means they are killing somebody. And who are they killing? Our local networks who are paying taxes to the government? No.